Hello everybody, I'm Zara Chapiwala from Virasate Hind Foundation under the paper Art and Architecture of India. Today we will discuss about Kakatiya Dynasties Art and Architecture. This module aims to study the features of art and architecture that was developed under the Kakatiyas of Warangal. Warangal Fort and the structures inside them, the features of the temple art and architecture, the hydraulic architecture of the Kakatiyas and their paintings. The general characteristic features of uh, Kakatiya architecture are, without any doubt, the Kirti Toranas, which are the symbols of Telangana tourism even to this date. They are distinct style of gateways that were unique to the Kakatiyas. Magnificent in proportions, these Toranas stand as testimony to the highly evolved aesthetics of the Kakatiya temple gateways. We will be discussing this, all these features in much detail even later. Trikutalayas conjoin three temples with three separate shrines and Antaralas, but a common mandapa. This was a feature that was prevalent in the Chalukya style of architecture, which they have inherited. Uh, and one could see a hybridized mixture of both North Indian Bhumija style as well as the Dravidian style of Shikara. The temple tank in town policy, the Kakatiyas constructed many, many tanks. Even today, all the tank or lake projects in Andhra are named after uh, the kings and the dynasty. Mini shrines on the exterior of the temple with extended base and eaves topped by pediments. Star-shaped plinths, again something that they have picked up from the uh, Chalukyas. Uh, latch turned pillars and the pillars consisting of uh, three sections, squares, octagonals and circular paths. Now, this is a major architectural achievement, especially the lath turned pillars because it is, uh, we are talking about a period that was centuries ago. We are talking about a period that did not have too much of technical advancement. In spite of that, we had something like this made up from lath. Lath, as you would have known, is a machine, a tool that goes around a particular object and makes it symmetrical in the same axis. Now, to turn this, you require something huge. A potter's wheel, for example, is turned and the pottery is molded on it. It is the most simplest and basic form of a lath. Now, similarly, imagine what would it take or what kind of a lath would it take to turn huge pillars of this sort that were made entirely either out of basalt or granite. So, elephants and horses were tied, used and they moved in circles to produce this beautiful symmetry. Some of these structures in the Hoysala period had, a, had ball bearings also and they could even turn. But during the Kakatiya era, such advancement was not seen. Perforated screens at the entrance of the Garbhagriha, very uh, akin to the Jalis that had become very commonplace during Mughal times. But much, much before the Mughals came and popularized marble Jalis, the stone Jalis were made famous by the Kakatiyas. Eaves all around the circumference of the temple, not just the Ardhamandap. Simple pyramidal Vimanas in stepped pattern. In fact, if you notice, even the plinth is in stepped pattern. Subjects of temple exterior sculptures ranging from dancing postures, sages, deities, floral motifs and rows of elephants. In fact, elephants are the most commonly seen animals on all the 
temples. Sculptures in the temple interior included mythological stories and trick sculptures. Trick sculptures in the sense that there would be a row of dancers showing a set of legs lesser than the number of dancers. Like they, the dancers would be three and the set of legs would be say four. Okay, so such kind as you can see here in the panel itself, they can be found in most of the Kakatiya temples. The foundation was built using the sandbox technology. It was made earthquake resistant. Basically, it consisted of three meters deep foundation pit that was filled with a mixture of sand, uh, powder of granite, jaggery and powder of a fruit called hirada or terminalia chabula to make it strong. What would happen if an earthquake did occur? The vibrations were absorbed by this cushion and they would weaken by the time they would read the structure, shortening the damage. The kakatiyas used everything that was available locally. The black granite and sandstone were mainly used for the structure. Black granite for pillars, jams, lintel beams, motifs and carvings. Granite is a hard stone. It is not very easy to carve. So you can judge the finesse of the craftsman just by looking at how beautifully they have carved all the pillars, ceilings and the door jams. While the sculptures are done in dolerite and granite, the vimanas were done in lightweight bricks. Decorative brackets and nandis were mostly carved out of the black basalt. You will talk about some of the kakatiya masterpieces, the Thousand Pillar Temple at Thanamkonda, the Warangal Fort and the Swayambhu Temple Ruins and the Ramappa Temple at Palampet. The Thousand Pillar Temple at Hanamkonda was is one of the earliest and the finest example of the architectural style of the Kakatiyas. Hanamkonda was the first capital of the Kakatiyas settled by Rudradeva I. The architecture of this temple shows heavy Chalukyan influence whether it is the plinth or the Triputalaya design. Both of them show a heavy influence of the Chalukya style of temple architecture. All the three shrines are dedicated to Shiva, Vishnu and Surya with a common mandap. A six feet tall monolithic black basalt nandi sits in front of the temple adorned with garlands and ornaments carved from a single stone. Now if you look here, it is very interesting that the Nandis carved during the Kakatiya eras never looked towards their Lord. They are all supposed to be looking towards Shiva in attendance. Here, mostly in all of the Kakatiya temples, you will find that the Nandi is looking elsewhere, mostly towards the other way and is in an alert position, almost as if waiting for some kind of instructions to be given and it will immediately gallop away. So the alert Nandis are a Kakatiya speciality. Just behind the Nandi is a pillared Sabha Mandap, the pillars of which were the reason this temple came to be known as the Thousand Pillared Temple. The exterior of this temple is adorned with alternative niches and pilasters and have mini shrines with extended base and eaves topped by towered pediments. Junction of the walls, that is the corner where the walls turn 90 degrees have been given special attention and decorated with extra ornamentation consisting of a wide band of friezes at the center and a projecting row of flowers or floral motifs. Below this are images of Vishnu on both the corners of the wall and beneath the Vishnu are three horizontal mouldings interrupted by a framed image. Under this is a continuous row of Rudrakshas 
separating two deep horizontal recesses. Exterior of the mandap as well is done in similar fashion. Temple's interiors exhibit typical Kakatiya features like the lath turned pillars, the, perfor the perforated jalis and various floral motifs. As you can see the details of the sculptures. Warangal Fort In the early 13th century, Ganapati Deva, the most uh, renowned of the Kakatiya kings who uh, brought together the entire Andhra region under the belt, uh, under the ambit of the Kakatiya dynasty. He was the one who established the Telugu identity. That is why even today the Telugu people uh, consider him as the king of the Telugu region. Under Ganapati Deva, maximum architectural innovation was seen. He the first thing he did was he moved his capital from Hanamkonda to a new city, Warangal, which was then known as Orugallu. Orugallu means one stone. Oru, one gallu stone. Orugallu, the, the capital city, was laid out in a circular plan with three concentric rings of walls. The first ring constitutes the fort and has high walls made up of granite blocks very similar to the Vijayanagar style of architecture. The, in fact, the Vijayanagar picked it up from here. Massive granite blocks used for making walls without any mortar. Earth was used as a filling instead. At the center of Warangal Fort is an open-air archaeological zone consisting of the excavated ruins of a Swayambhu Shiva temple, including the granite pillars, ceiling panels, brackets, beams and other parts of the said temples and its subshrines. The Kakatiyas are said to have been worshippers of the Swayambhu form of Shiva. If the epigraphic evidence is to be believed, then their first ancestor was Avenna, who was living in a place called Kakatipura. An alternate uh, story also suggests that the name Kakatiya comes from Kakatipura, and Kakatipura comes from the name of goddess Kakati, which was worshipped by the Kakatiyas. The Kirti Toranas. The freestanding portals acting as decorative gateways to the Swayambhu temple complex. And though the temple complex does not remain and only four Toranas remain, they are etched in Telugu memory in such a way that they have become the symbol of Telangana. Each such Torana has four pillars surmounted by miniature Vimanas. Between them is a lintel beam composed of five inverted lotus buds coming out from the mouth of elongated makaras having very elaborate tail designs. Below this is a row of nine rudrakshas and below them are seven inverted lotus buds. This lintel beam projects beyond the second column on either side with carved hamsas standing on platform held up by dwarfs, ganas. The projection is supported by a curved bracket on which stands a yali. Some of the notable ruins inside the fort are the mandapa pillars and a sanctuary entrance frame with intricately curved capitals and a shiva dwarapalaka. A triangular part of a ceiling panel showing musicians, warriors, attendants around a Mahishasur Martini image. Below this is also a frieze with continuous rows of yalis. Arrangement of various ruined parts of a Shiva shrine. In fact, the shrine is completely rebuilt by putting one member on top of the other as was available in, and not rebuilding it again. It is there just as a ruin you can see those handsome dwarapalakas carved in relief there. They have four hands and wear a conical mukuta and are shown holding the trishul and dambru and flanked by dwarf images of attendants, the ganas. 
The linga is placed on a platform whose molded base has designs of swans, yalis and lotuses, the three most favourite sculptural details of the Kakatiyas. The shrine is sheltered by a block that is supported by hefty pillars. The Ganesha temple, again just like the Swayambhu temple is assembled by placing various ruined paths that were available. Further right is a massive broken ceiling panel containing a Kirti Mukha monster mask framed by foliage and creeper design. An entrance frame to the Garbhagriha is seen with perforated screens and alternate designs of swans. The perforated jali is flanked by vertical creeper designs. Next to it is an intricately carved pilasters having images of Krishna flanked by attendants and standing under a mini torana. The granite blocks, fragments of ceiling, massive pyres lie scattered in the complex. If you go there, you will feel that you have, you are getting a glimpse of something very glorious. A shallow square tank having steps with sculpted balustrades at the center on all, all four sides are also seen, these are a row of identical bathrooms surrounding a tank, each with a raised platform at the center and a de decorated slab at the entrance. A curved water channel from each of these rooms leads to a larger main channel, the kind of engineering that was there even at that time. Elephant sculptures adorn the entrance of the Swayambhu temple and a greatly intact Nandi sculptures, if you notice, all of them are monolithic. The Ramapa temple at Palampit, probably the only temple in India named after its architect or sculpture, Ramapa, who designed it. It was commissioned by Re Chalra Rudra, a commander under King Ganapati Deva in a Ektala style and was consecrated in the year 1213. Rachel Ra Rudra was very loyal to Ganapati Deva. When Ganapati Deva was captured by the Yadavas of Devagiri, it was Rachel Ra Rudra who came to his rescue. Due to various pressures on the Yadavas, they released Ganapati Deva and to commemorate that, Rachel Ra Rudra built the Ramapa temple. This temple is often described as the best architectural masterpiece the Kakatiyas ever created due to its intricate wall carvings, pillars, ceilings and its marvelous building. It is considered the climax of the Kakatiya style of Ramapa temple consists of a Garbhagriha, an Antarala and a Mahamandap in the main structure. A ruined Nandi Mandap is also seen but with an intact Nandi sitting right in front of the temple very similarly in an alert position looking elsewhere. The few other smaller structures exist in the complex including shrines of Kateshwara and Kameshwara. The temple stands on a six feet high star shaped platform, the Upapita. Its Mukhamandap has entrances on three sides, all of which are flanked by monolithic elephant sculptures. Its ornate Adisthana, as well as walled portion of the Mukhamandap, has figures of sages, the Mithuna or lovemaking couples, warriors, acrobats, musicians, various gods and goddesses on a continuous frieze. Below the lower frieze of floral motifs is a row of elephants throughout the running, running circumference of the temple. The very wonderful thing about this frieze is that no, sing, no two elephants are identical. Every elephant is doing something different than the other elephant. Inside, there is a large Nitya Mandap in front of the Garbhagriha and is supported by four large stone pillars. Each pillar is intricately carved. The pillars flank a large circular stone slab where the temple dance performances take place. Another different 
फीचर ऑफ दिस टेम्पल इज दैट द गर्भगृह इज गार्डेड बाय द द्वार पालिकास इंस्टेड ऑफ द्वार पालास The perforated screen above these dwar palikas show various artists performing dances and various musical instruments. The the postures that they uh, exhibit are belonging to various dance forms like the Bharat Natyam, the Shringa, Bharunga, Rathi, Perini Nitra, Nritya, etc. Even Kolatam scenes are seen. Many mythological events like Gopika Vastra Haranam, Tripura Sundari, Tripura Survada, Daksha Samhara, Samudra Mantan, Girija Kalyanam are represent represented in various parts of the temple interiors. The Nartakis, known as the Madanikas, are arranged as supporting brackets on both sides of each of the three entrances. That is a total of a Twelve Madanika sculptures. You can say, in fact, the Madanika sculptures are considered the highest achievement of sculptural brilliance of the Kakatiya era stone masons because the they are very beautiful, very graceful dancers with elongated figures, and it is difficult to believe that they were completely carved in. hard stone with their ornaments flaying and their positions very dynamic dancing in different positions very beautiful so the local dances are represented in the sculptural art of this temple for dance lovers it is a very important temple as in it is a documentation of what was there because some of these dance dance forms like the perini the suddha nartana the danda rasa shiva priya chindu are not there anymore the kolata still exists but then uh, and even the bharatanatyam but the other dances don't exist but their postures can be found in this temple see how beautiful they are There is a very unusual set of carved images in the Ramappa, which are the erotic scenes. They are unlike the scenes that you can see in other temples, like the Khajuraho. They are basically not copulating couples. You will uh, mostly the scenes are uh, like whether it is a lady or whether uh, the lady showing her genitals or a nymph showing her genitals or uh, someone trying to undress. or a sage trying to uh, encourage someone uh, for uh, copulation oral copulation so these uh, rituals that are depicted here are believed to be indicating of the prominence of the cult of veera shaivism that was prevalent in those times the kakatiyas at the beginning was supposed to be jainas who converted themselves to shaiva worshipers and from being uh, shaiva worshipers they turned into veera shaiva worshipers the other kakat we will discuss the other kakatiya temples also which are the padmakshi temple the kashi vishveshwaralayam the ganapeshwaralayam the chenakeshava the shri mallikarjun swami temple the shiva temple and the keshavardhana panchamukhalingeshwara temple padmakshi temple is at hanamkonda in varangal it is one of the oldest kakatiya era temples and was con- constructed by the earlier king prola 2 during the kakatiyas began as feudatories uh, once uh, they to begin with they were feudatories of the chalukyas as soon as their power started waning pratap rudra declared himself independent and thus began the independent rule of the kakatiya dynasty the kakatiya king bitaraju too was the first kakatiya king to have converted to Veera Shaivism. This temple too was later converted to Padmakshi temple once the rulers converted to the cult. Hence, the temple bears several sculptures on its wall that display Jain Tirthankaras and other motifs belonging to the Jain culture. 
Sakashi Vishweshwaralayam at Kalpagur, which is in Medak district. This temple complex consists of three temples, that is the Kashi Vishweshwara temple, the Venugopal Swami temple and the Ananta Padmanabha Swami temple, together known as Trikutalayam, that is three temples. These were constructed between 11th and the 12th centuries. The composite temple consists of a porch in the east and the three temples and the rest in other three directions. The pillars in the mandapa are done in the typical Kagatiya style. The temple's Nandi Mandapa has beautifully carved stone pillars. The Nandi idol here is largely plain except for a few ornamentations. The temple also consists of a Mukha Mandap and a Rang Mandap meant for temple dances. The sanctum consists of a Shivalinga placed on an elevated platform the doorway of which is again carved with Dwarapalas. Another monolithic Nandi sits outside the sanctum made of granite stone. The Venugopal Swami temple is located on the north side of the temple. Various decorative motifs are molded on the Antarala such as the Brugavyalams. Brugavyalams are the yalis with deer in it and miniature pillars. The court attendants flank the entrance to the Garbhagriha along with the Dwarapalas. The lower portion is decorated with dancers again. You can imagine the place that dance had in the society during the Kakatiyas because of the importance given to their sculptures and their presence in absolutely every temple built during those times. The Anantam Padmanabha Swami temple is situated on western side and possesses an Antarala and a Garbhagriha. The intricacy in the interior of these temples is not re represented in the exterior. The exterior is extremely simple with brick and mortar stepped pyramidal vimana without any carvings. Internally, this temple is so, so intricately carved that it resembles the thousand pillar temple of Varangal. The Ganapeshwaralayam or the Ghanpur group of temples. The Ghanpur group of temples known as Ghanpur Kota Gallu. Kota Gallu is Kota is a fort, Gallu is a temple. So, temple four, four temples were constructed during the reign of Ganapati Deva in early 13th century. It consists of 22 different sculpture, uh, structures enclosed by a prakara. The six small Shiva shrines are the first structures one comes across while entering the now ruined complex. The main Shiva temple at the center is built on a high star shaped plinth. It consists bracket figures of yalis and here also you can see the dancing mandakinis. Though not as beautiful as they are at the Ramappa temple. The east facing main shrine has an intricately carved granite door leading to the inner sanctum. The Nandi bull sits at the center of a courtyard and the main Shiva shrine is flanked on either sides by two structures. To the north lies another Shiva shrine and to the south a mandap. The Shiva temple on the north follows the same plan as the main shrine but smaller in size. The structure on the south is mandap. Some of the central square sections contain sculptured panels and the entire complex is littered with large slabs of sandstones, several of which contain intricately carved friezes. Miraculously, this temple seems to have escaped the breath of Tughlaq raids and can be seen in full splendor even today. Chennakeshava temple at Pillal Marri in Nalgonda district. Quite similar to Ramapa temple at Palampet but less intricate. It once housed the beautiful painting adorning its wall. The Mandapa walls ceilings are replete with frescoes and inscriptions which elaborately describe the rule of the Kakatiya kings. Unfortunately, only a few traces remain today and Kakatiya paintings that adorned the ceilings and walls of various other structures seems to have been lost in time. 
the Sri Malikarjuna Swami Temple in Avalu, Varangal district. Constructed in 11th century by a minister, Sri Ayanna, this temple has 108 pillars but devoid of sculptures. The temple is enclosed by a rectangular prakara approximately 12 feet high. Outside the prakara wall is the massive 24 pillared Rangamandap. Architecturally, not very significant, but it has massive Kirti Toranas. These Kirti Toranas echo the prominence of this temple. Having those Kirti Toranas at gateways makes this temple very important. The Shiva Temple at Duddeda, Medak district. Architecturally, this temple be belongs to the later period, late Kakatiya period, consisting of a Garbhagriha and a 14 pillared Mandapa and a renovated Vimana. The door jamb of the entrance is flanked by two Shiva Dwarapalas and also consists a shrine dedicated to Mother Goddess. Look, the three Lingeshwaralayam at Yellaredipet. Again in Medak district. Located on the eastern side of Yella Redipet village, this temple faces south and has a common mandap. The mandap consists of 16 pillars and 3 shrines. All the 3 shrines have Shivalingas. The lintel of the Garbhagriha entrance is carved with a Gajalakshmi, and above the lintel, miniature temple models are noticed on the western side shrine. Constructed during the period of Ganapati Deva, this temple is dedicated to Shiva and dates around 1236. The Trikuta temples, that is the three temples, are located within a single stone prakara. Each shrine has a Garbhagraha and an Antarala located on the north, west and south. All the three shrines are dedicated to Shiva. To the northeast of this Trikuta temple is the temple tank. Keshavardhana Panchamukhalingeshwara temple, Raikal, Karimnagar district. Cruciform in plan and Trikuta in type. This temple is dedicated to Shiva, Vishnu and Surya. The distinct feature of this temple are its curvilinear shikhara seemingly inspired by the Kalinga style of temple architecture, the Rekha duels. It is a clear departure from the pyramidal Vimanas that are generally seen in Kakatiya temples. These Shikaras are also topped with Amalaka Shri decorations, very, very similar to the Kalinga style of temples. Apart from the temples, the Kakatiyas built many for forts to defend their territories. Some of the forts are Ramagiri Fort in Pedapalli district. This famous fort is located in the Ramagiri hillocks. It is built up of stone, has several bastions spread over a vast area and it was under the control of Gundaraja of Mantani and Edaraja of Ramagundam. There are many important structures on the hill fort like the Sri Taramalayam, the Ramastapita Lingam, Sita Ram Kolnu, Aswashala, the horse stable, Gajashala, elephant stables, the, Cherasha, the Cherashala prison, Darbar hall and a good number of wells along with Islamic monuments added later by the Muslim rulers. Kila Ghanpur in Mehbubnagar district. This is the hill fort which was built by joining the adjacent mountains by Gona Ganna Reddy, the army commander in chief under King Queen Rudrama Devi during the year 1224. When Rudrama Devi underwent the Potrika ceremony to be anointed as the inheritor, sole inheritor of the Kakatiya throne. She faced a lot of internal turmoil and also external threats. She quelled this internal turmoil with the help of a few chiefs. One of them was this Reddy chief called Gonaganna Reddy. As a return, he was given the area of Ghanpur to rule and he accepted the suzerainty of the Kakatiyas.
Inside this fort, there are temples dedicated to Veerabhadreshwara, Narsimha Swami and Goddess Chaudeshwari. Inside the fort, there is a king's palace and minister's chambers and various residences. The Golconda Fort uh, was initially built as a mud fort in around 1143 on a 480 feet high granite hill as a western defense for Orugalu and the other Kakatiya territories. The fort was rebuilt and strengthened by Rudramma Devi and later also by Prataparudra. However, in that day, those days, it was just a mud fort. Today, whatever you see in Golconda is courtesy the Mahamani and the Kutub Shahi rule. The Medak Fort in Telangana. The fort at Medak was originally constructed during King Pratap Rudra's rule and later developed by the Kutub Shahi kings because Pratap Rudra was the last king to rule the Kakatiya kingdom. The fort which stands about 90 meters above the surrounding plains is one of the most important hill forts in the Deccan region. It was built on a rocky hill and then fortified with bastions and walls which rise above one and the other in many different levels. Despite ruling over an ecologically dry zone with scanty rainfall and a not so fertile soil, the Kakatiyas paid much attention to agriculture, the main occupation of the majority of its population. To augment the water supply that was uh, scanty, they constructed huge tanks alongside the temples as well as otherwise. Of all the tanks, the Ramappa tank and the Pakal lake are the largest. Dur uh, in the time of Rudramma Devi, she strengthened the agriculture and trade of the Kakatiya kingdom, realizing how important it was to strengthen the economy. The Munuru people, it is a caste of agriculturalists. They were bought all the way from Tamil Nadu to settle down in Orugallu. And today the Munuru Kapu community are the descendants of that community. Munuru, the name comes from Mudunuru. Mudunuru means 300 in Telugu. 300 people came and settled down. That's how they get their names, Munuru. During that time, when trade was being encouraged, every occupation had a guild. So there was a guild of painters, there was a guild of sculptors, there was a guild of artisans, there was a guild of agriculturists, there was a guild of merchants. The, one such guild was of the Vishwakarmas. The Vishwakarmas were experts in metal sheet casting. Copper and the knowledge of its alloys and extraction is an ancient knowledge in our country. So bronze and brass being alloys of copper have been variously used for many many purposes. During the Kakatiya era, these sheets, these brass sheets were used to coat the Vigrahas or the idols and they were also used for making utensils that were used for ritualistic purpose in the temples like the bells or the kalasha or the aharati holder and they also built utensils for domestic purposes like the urli, the pots. Later when the kakatiyas did not hold their sway, the artisans continued the trade under various other kingdoms producing goods that catered to their demands because Kakatiyas were not just the patrons of the art but they were also the major con consumers. Once their consumption came down, the artists needed other consumers. So in order to keep their trade alive, they changed the expression of their art. So now apart from making utensils for ritualistic use and domestic use. They also made flower vases, pan, da, pan holders, 
and uh, so later on during the british era time and even today they make this sheet metal uh, frames of the shavtara or the various scenes from the puranas to be framed and kept in the house this art is so important and significant that it has a geographical indication tag and is practiced exclusively at pemberthi the village that was settled during the kakatiya eras especially for the vishvakarmas and even today this village has descendants of the vishvakarmas staying and practicing the art during the kakatiya period more than a thousand paintings existed in capital alone because it was believed that many painters were encouraged to come and settle down in the capital the chitrashala of machal devi machal devi was prata king prataparudra's favorite courtesan her chitrashala was very famous for its painted ceilings which consisted of various episodes from the puranas not just the puranas but there were also a lot of erotic paintings done unfortunately the chitrashala and the chitramandap that was made in the capital that is in orugallu do not exist only a few samples exist on the ceilings of the temples in pillalmarri and palampet but traces of this style can be found in the cherial paintings and the art of kalamkari painting the cheriala is a small village near warangal the painters have settled there and exclusively make this scroll paintings the scroll paintings of the patachitra again is an ancient art of this country which was prevalent in many regions the scrolls were painted and used by the people to tell stories the tuglaks came many times to defeat the kakatiyas and at last one day they were successful with a strengthened army and with prataparudra falling down the kakatiyas lost their steam they could not continue to fight with the tuglaks once once the tuglaks left his brother prataparudra at that time who was the king his brother king annamdev fled from there and went to bastar it present the chatisgarh with a small army there he defeated the nagavanshi kings and established his own kingdom till independence it was king annamdev and his descendants that ruled the princely state of bastar while harihara and bukka his treasury chiefs were taken away as prisoners of war along with king prataparudra to delhi but prataparudra could not bear the insult and he killed himself by jumping into the river godavari while harihara and bukka converted and came back only to reconvert to hinduism and establish the mighty vijayanagar empire i hope you enjoyed this lecture for more information please refer to the e text that is uploaded on the website thank you